Well, Josh, one of the cool things about spending some time in the St. Petersburg Clearwater area is that you've got hockey to watch. And I, I saw you not only getting to some hockey games like the All Star Game, but you're like you're like crashing interviews and stuff too. Uh, when did you become such a huge hockey fan? Well, very first off, thanks for having me. Second off, uh, a lot of the Canadians a couple of years ago came in. And when I say Canadians, uh, I mean for the the Canadian hockey players that were playing for like the World Cup of Hockey. And uh, they came into the locker room and I met a bunch of the guys and me and uh, Sam Coast hit it off uh, instantly. And him and I kind of started uh, chatting and I actually took him out on the field when the field was closed and was hitting them ground balls and fly balls and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, if you're like that interested, I, I'll get interested in, in watching hockey because I've never followed it. Stamkos can play and, too, uh, eh? He can he can hit the baseball. Uh, we didn't do any hitting, but he had a really good arm, and because he was he was diving all over the place to to the point to where I was getting nervous that I didn't want him to injure him. <laughs> We're in conversation with Josh Donaldson. Okay, Josh. I may not be able to help you learn how to catch a baseball because, as you know, my baseball skills are not quite up to where yours are. Although, you know. I'm... Which I've seen you try to catch a couple balls before. You know, the man. effort is there. The oh, man. There. Yeah. You Barry know? Davis is just chirped by everybody. Roberto Alomar chirps him. Then you got Josh Donaldson chirping oh, it's, him. It's, it's ridiculous. But, uh, however. Well, because uh, his heart's there. His heart's there. Well, that, yes. I'll say this about Barry. Barry's not scared to lay it on the line. And if he makes a fool of himself, then that's kind of what happens sometimes. But, you know, he gets back up and tries again. <laughs> Barry's a grinder, Josh. Would Barry be a he grinder? A well, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, I was a pretty damn yeah, fine. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was a pretty damn fine hockey goalie. So while I might not be able to help okay. you with, with the ball, I could certainly help you catch a puck. Okay, I like that. So I like that. It, it, I played a little. I, I, I like playing goalie too, and I played roller hockey. I kind of figured you would. So the cool yeah, thing about you. I don't know why. <laughs> the cool thing about you getting on this show was, you're at Winterfest a few weeks ago. You're serving mm -hmm. people drinks at the bar, and there's this huge oh, yeah. crowd of people. And unlike in the old days, where I would just you know flash my media credential and just hang out behind the bar with you. I'm maneuvering my way through hundreds of people because it's the only way I can get to you. Because you're a peasant. Because pretty much, <laughs> you look up and you see my ugly mug. Are you thinking like, what the hell is this guy doing here? I honestly, you kind of caught me off guard, Barry. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, expecting you at all to see you. But um, did you think you I know, died or maybe, something? <laughs> I, just, I didn't know, Barry. I, I, I just hadn't. I didn't know. I didn't know what you were doing. So we put it out on uh, on Twitter that we'd like to get you on the show, and within like 15 minutes, we've got hundreds of our listeners writing to you, and then lo and behold, you reach out to me. So I thought that was very cool that you were willing to come on. Blue Jay fans, man, oh man, uh, they love you, and I'm wondering what that is like for you, because I've talked to people like Roberto Alomar and way back Kelly Gruber about living as in some ways, this rock star where people just adore you, but you don't take it for granted, and you obviously want to continue to to make yourself worthy. But how cool is the feeling to to have a fan base like you do? It's cool. I mean, I I, I think what separates. I don't really. I try not to focus on stuff like that. I think it's cool when you get out there and you have experiences like the Winterfest, where the fans can get to you know be around the players and where I can serve them drinks where that probably would be very less likely of happening. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I definitely appreciate it. And, but at the end of the day, I just try to be a pretty average human being. And what I mean by that is just trying to be normal. I don't really try to focus too much on my, on how many fans that I have or things like that. But I think it's pretty neat. I think it's been a very, Exciting time to be a Toronto Blue Jay, and I think it's been uh, a pretty exciting time to be a Blue Jays fan, and hopefully we can continue or get back on our winning ways and, uh, you know, give these guys something to cheer about this year. Josh, if there was one memory or so, one interaction 
with a fan that would be at the top of your list, what would it be? Oh man. Uh, a real head scratcher. I, I got I got one uh, that might be uh, on your list. Uh, a big fan of yours by the name of Stephen Amell. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't. I didn't really consider Stephen a fan. I consider him more of a you know a friend. Uh, but at the same time, yeah. I mean, that was that was really neat. You know, Stephen kind of before him and I were introduced to each other. You know, Barry kind of linking that up between both of us and getting to meet each other and, you know, the things that, you know, he was able to post some videos about for the all-star game and it was a big help. And that, that would definitely be one of the top experiences for sure. You've been on, you know, the big stage of playing a baseball game in front of 50,000 people. You've also been on the set of a TV show. Is there any comparison to the two? Is there any kind of pressures of the camera is on and you're on as opposed to you're up at the plate? Uh, it's a different type of pressure because it's an environment probably that I'm not very comfortable in and uh, not very confident in, I would say, as, as I would be in baseball. But it was a great great experience. And I would say probably the hardest part of it, uh, they had a, di- a dialect coach, which I'm, I'm from the South, is different, and I'm – and pretty much monotone for the most part. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to hear those things, but uh, that was the hardest part. Have, trying to have a, a dialect coach and enunciate words differently to kind of sound more like them. Were you able to watch yourself back? Because I know a lot of people that oh, I can't see, I can't watch myself doing something like this. I could watch it. I just don't really like to hear myself. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, and I enjoyed watching the show, so I definitely watched it. To this day, and, and Matt was alluding to the fact that people rag on me for for not being able to make catches. To this day, I get people constantly, and I know you. This was never your intention, but constantly saying to me, "We like our team, Barry." And I remember at the time you going, "Oh man, I cannot believe people are making such a big deal of it." But brother, man. People made a huge deal out of it. There was T-shirts and signs, and it was just crazy. When you made that quote to me, just to clarify, were you just speaking your mind because I was asking you about the changes the team made, or do you even have any memories of that at all? Well, the thing is, we just came out of the All-Star break, and I think we added a – I remember we added Francisco Liriano, and I want to say we added another pitcher. It, 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 we get pretty much the same questions all, all the time. But I really even that we haven't even had a chance to digest who we have in our team a whole lot. And you know, we just finished playing a game and I think that we won and I think it was more or less kind of a little bit of sarcasm and just kind of be straight to the point to where we can talk about that tomorrow after the game. We can talk about the game now that just happened. Talk about the the team tomorrow. So that was your nice way of saying, Barry, that's a stupid freaking question. Let's put this to rest, right? Yeah. Let's be honest, right? Let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> you are very social media savvy because you were able to express to, to John Heyman your displeasure for what he wrote and how he wrote it, but you didn't come off as being whiny or complainy or, you know, you, you were very, very uh, sincere about it. And fair about it. It and, was it was very professional. Yeah, and, and he you know he wrote back an apology and said he was going to retract. But Josh, five six years ago, if you were to see something like that, would you be seething? Would you have handled it differently than you did now because you're a little more older, and mature? Uh, I can't say yes or no to that. Just for the fact that I I never really had anything like that come up. I would hope that I would have continued to handle it, handle it in a professional manner. Uh, I, I do respect the media's job and what they have to do um, and putting material and stuff is out there, which for me, if you're going to talk, you can, you can say that I'm not very good at what I do, or you can say that you don't like me as a player or you don't want me necessarily on your team, but because that's your opinion. If your opinion is what you're saying, I'm not going to disagree with it because you you are, or, or I can disagree with it, but I'm not going to voice my displeasure with it because it's your opinion. I don't I don't really care what everyone's opinion is about me. 
what I do care about is if somebody is trying to bring my friends into it or, or my family and trying to make some allegations that really aren't true, uh, that aren't opinions that they're trying to make seem more fact based. And when that happens, I have to set the line or I have to, I have to re make them go out and kind of acknowledge that they were wrong to a certain extent because people, what they read on social media, people believe this stuff and he's a credible writer to some extent. And where people really listen to what he says that have to do with baseball. So ultimately I wanted to set the record straight because that wasn't happening and that hasn't happened. And I knew that he hasn't talked to anybody that's close to me uh, because my pe- the people that are close to me don't know him. Listen, th- from a fan standpoint, from a media standpoint, there's probably going to be that cloud around it until you're either signed to an extension with the Blue Jays or get traded or become a free agent. How do you avoid that becoming a cloud on you? Is it easy enough to just ignore all of that and worry about playing baseball? Yeah, because it's not that big of a deal to me as far as not that I'm going to be here or not going to be here. Because I'm happy where I'm at right now. And, you know, I was taught to worry about things that I can control. And, you know, this is the entirety of it is not something that I can control. So when I do get put in an opportunity that I can't control, then I'll worry about it then. To me, Barry, I'm going to make my money in the game no matter what. And for me to go out there and just sit here and say, oh, I'm, I'm demanding this, I'm demanding that that would be not smart of me. And I, I, I don't feel that I have to do that. And I feel like I've been very open with the media saying, hey, I'm willing to listen to what's going on. I do want to stay in Toronto. Um, but at the end of the day, like it, it's a two-way street and – I'm not displeased at all with what uh, the Blue Jays management and front office is doing. I'm very, I've been very happy with where we've gotten to to this point because I understand that this is a business and I understand that there are multiple things that factor in what are going on. Uh, do I worry about those things? No, I don't worry about it because I know eventually my time is going to come and the time is going to be addressed one way or another, and ultimately I'm going to be happy with whatever decision's made. Being the fact that they're what you call a late bloomer, I mean, a lot of players reach that free agency point at a younger age. Yeah. Does it does it play on your mind that this could be the one and only chance that you would have to become that free agent and cash in on that mega deal? Uh, I, I think that if everything plays out the way that this year I, I plan for it to playing out, um, I will have an opportunity to probably sign a contract that is going to finish my career in baseball one way or another. Um, and that's what ultimately the, the goal for is right now. Now there could be things that happen throughout the season or things that go on to where, that plan begins to change a little bit, but ultimately, uh, I'm pretty confident in, in myself, and I believe in myself, and I believe that we're going to end up getting something done at the end of the day, whether it's for me staying in Toronto for the rest of my career, or if it's whatever, whatever it may be. But my whole focus right now is just really making sure that I'm doing the best that I can for the Toronto Blue Jays organization and hopefully helping us get back to the playoffs like we had in the previous two years.